today let's learn all about shadows. So what is a shadow? Good question. A shadow is formed when a solid object blocks light from hitting a certain area. Any object can cast a shadow as long as there is a light source, a solid object and an area for the shadow to form on. And as you can see in this picture, the light source is the light bulb, the solid object is the star, and the shadow is formed on the flat surface of the wall. When do you think you have seen your shadow? Well, if you're walking around during the day or playing out on the playground at lunchtime, you might see that the sun is pushing a black image behind you onto the ground. That is your shadow. But you might also see your shadow at nighttime if you're walking around and you're underneath a street light. That street light might also be casting your shadow onto the ground. So to create your own shadow, let's have a look at this. You can make your own shadow by standing beside a wall and getting somebody to shine a torch over your body. If you don't have a torch, you can watch how the sun or even the lights from your house make the shape of your body on the wall. Maybe you could pause the video here and go and try that. So here is a good question. Why do shadows change size? Well, I think it's all something to do with the light source. Let's focus on the light source being the sun. Shadows change sizes depending on the angle that the light source is hitting the object. A shadow appears on the opposite side from where the light is coming from. If the light is coming from above, the shadow is going to be shorter. If the light is coming from the side, it's going to be longer. So if you have a look at these two pictures here, we've got two cylinders. One of them, we've got the light coming from above, which is making the shadow shorter. And then we've got the light source coming from down on the side, which is making the shadow longer. That's why in summer, when the sun is higher up in the sky, our shadows are shorter. But when the sun is getting lower in the sky, our shadows stretch out longer, making our shadows look really, really tall. I love it when that happens because I'm not a very tall person, but when the sun is low in the sky, it makes my shadow really tall and long. Here are two pictures that show some examples. And again, I'm using animals because I love them so much. If you look at the picture of the dog, the light source from the sun is hitting the dog from down low, making him have a long shadow. And as you can see with this cute little kitty, the light from the sun is hitting the cat from above, making her have a short shadow. Can you see the two differences? If you need to, you can pause the video and have a look at the long and the short shadows. Right, now shadows can be done outside and they can be done inside. You may have heard of shadow puppets before. Shadow puppets is when you use your hands and put it into different positions and then the shadow on the wall can be made to look like animals or other certain things. So again, you can either try this right now and you pause the video or you could try it later on tonight. We're going to be making some shadow puppets with our hands. A fun activity is to try and make shadow puppets with your hands. First of all, shine a bright light onto the wall. Use your hand in front of the light to create different pictures and animals using the shadow that is being cast. Okay. Now we've got three different images of three different apples with three different shadows. And our mini activity here is to have a think about where we think the light source is coming from. Now I'm thinking because these apples are probably inside, the light source might be a lamp or a light inside. So you can pause the video and have a think about where you think the light source is for the first, second and third picture. So you pause the video, have a think, and we'll come back to look at that. So we can show you where the light source is coming from by using an arrow. In the first picture with the green apple, you can see that the arrow is pointing from the side, making the shadow go on the opposite side. 
because a shadow can never come in between the object and the light source. It's always going to be on the opposite side of the object. The middle apple, because it's a short shadow, we can tell that the light source is coming from above. Then the last apple, we can tell that the light source is coming from the side that is opposite to the shadow. I wonder how many of those you guessed correctly. So now it's time for your activity. We're going to be creating some shadow art. I want you to get a big piece of paper as long as you can and you're going to put it down on the ground. If you're doing it in the daytime, you can use the sun as your light source. If you're doing it in the nighttime, you can use a lamp or a light from indoors. Put the paper down and then I want you to pick some interesting objects to place in front of the paper. Then when the light source is hitting those, you can trace around the shadow. Then you can take those objects away and if you want to, you can decorate the shadow and make it look as beautiful as you would like any patterns that you want. So I've done an example of how I would do this shadow art and I'll show you a photo of all the patterns that I drew on the inside. Now you guys have fun with this activity and see if you can get as many other people to join you as possible and you can have a long line of shadow art. Have fun and remember I've got lots of other videos on my Touring Teacher channel that focus on distance learning or learning from home videos and lots of other videos that can help you during this time. Have fun and I'll see you soon.